Okay, uh, welcome back everybody. So today we're going to be cutting a 111 slab of silicon dioxide. That's a FCC crystal. And one, someone on a previous video had commented that they were having trouble with the system. Uh, I think transforming the crystal to the, so that the 111 face was exposed was, was fine. But then they had problems uh, adding vacuum. And I know that can be tough. So I think it's maybe in everybody's best interest if I show how this could be done. Uh, shown here, I think, is actually the primitive cell in a materials project. Um, but I think we'll work with the computed, uh, with the standard conventional cell today. So if you press sieve here, you can get this conventional standard. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be able to transform this into the, so that the 111 face is exposed using just a simple matrix. In previous videos, I had showed you how to cut it using lattice planes. Uh, you don't need to do that anymore. You can apply that transformation matrix to any cubic lattice. Um, so yeah, these, these transformation matrices that we got in previous videos where we do the lattice cutting, you can now just apply that to any cubic lattice. So that, that's good across all cubic lattices, basically. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and download the system. So I go to Civ Conventional Standard. I press this, I'm in Chrome, and it shall open. Okay, so here is the silicon dioxide. Quite a bit of atoms in this system, 24, that's pretty expensive. Uh, especially oxygen, which carry, you know, six valence electrons. So, you know, this is not a cheap system. Um, let me show you something, though. Uh, let's first go to Edit Bonds, and I delete this. I, I take the silicon oxygen bond I have, and I delete it. Press Apply. So it gets rid of those pesky bonds that are all over the place. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how this lattice plane is transformed. This was, um, I think, someone named Michael LeCount in a couple videos back, uh, a video on zinc oxide I did, uh, showed me this, this trick, and it's really amazing. So you go to Edit, Lattice Planes, and let's go ahead and put a lattice plane for 111 into our system. Press Enter. And so you can see this is the 111 plane of our system here. And it's an internal plane. And what we're going to do is make a new unit cell such that this plane is an exposed face. So it's one of these faces on the edges. So select OK. Uh, now, how are, how are we going to get this plane so that it's exposed? Well, we're going to use a transformation matrix that we had found in, in many videos for FCC systems. So let's to apply it, we go to Edit, Edit Data, Unit Cell. We go to Transform. And here you can just type in this matrix. So the upper left block will be 0.5s. And we have a negative here, a negative one. And this column are all ones. So we've, I've been just jumping right to the transformation matrix in many videos. You go ahead and press OK. It'll give you a warning that the matrix has changed its coordinate system. That's fine. Select Yes. Also, the volume changes as well. So the, not a problem. Select Yes. I like to select this middle option. I don't think it matters for this specific case, but it will matter if you're trying to make a hetero structure and it's just better to do it. So I'll select OK. Now select Apply. And you can see now that this exposed face, basically this slice, this plane, not this one, but any slice, any plane uh, in the AB space, uh, any you know plane in the AB plane, for lack of a better phrase, is going to be the 111 surface. So that's actually really, really cool. So the 111 surface in the original cell has been transformed to the 003 surface in this cell. Okay, so now the question is how do we add vacuum to this system? Uh, so this one is a little bit tricky because you have some periodic boundary in the oxygen and you have periodic boundary in the silicon. So let's go ahead and first save this. File, export data. Uh, we're gonna export it to uh, this folder I have here. And we'll just call it SIO2111. Save it. Uh, we'll save it as Cartesian coordinates. This is important, select okay. Okay. I press Command W, you can press Control W if you're on a Mac, or on a PC. If you're on a Mac like me, you need Command W. Just to reiterate, it's Control W on a Windows. That will exit this little tab here. And I'm just not going to save that. 
So now I'm going to go into PyCharm, which is my text editor here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just show you that I have this VASP file here saved. Okay. So now let's go back into Vesta and let's reload that. So I'm going to press Command O to open. You could just go to File Open. You see that's Command O. If you're on Windows, I think it's Control O. So let's go open this uh, file. Okay, as we had it. So we can press A and then two right. So first things first, let's delete those pesky bonds. And then what we have to do is we are gonna add vacuum in the C dimension, C as in cat. Now, what happens is we're gonna end up saving this structure as an XYZ. And when we save the structure in Vesta as an XYZ, Vesta will save all of the atoms on the screen. And this is not correct. And if we, if we were to just save all the atoms on the screen here, the atoms we get will not be correct because we'll be double counting a lot of atoms. So for example, this atom and this atom are atom 12 and they're the same because they're just the periodic replica. And so how this works is if you want to add vacuum in C, then you need to keep this periodic replica in C because once you add the vacuum here, this atom and this atom will no longer be the same atom. However, because we're keeping periodic boundary conditions in A, this atom and this atom will actually still be the same. So by adding vacuum in the C, we're breaking the periodicity. And when you break the periodicity, the atoms uh, become, they retain a uniqueness. So basically we need to delete the non-unique atoms in the direction that we are going to retain periodicity. So here you could see we're going to retain periodicity in A. So let's delete all of the atoms that are repeated in A. So we can actually just go ahead and go like this. And now let's do the same for B. So delete all the atoms that are repeated in B. So here it's pretty much this entire you can see here all of these atoms where my cursor is and this one for B as well. And that is it. So this, this should be good. Now we've kept this one in C because this is now a new atom. We've kept this one in C because this one's now a new atom. So we should be good at this point. Let's go ahead and save this file export data. We're going to export it as silicon 111, uh, but we're going to save it as an XYZ. Uh, no, we would not like to save hidden atoms. I think if you save this, it'll, if you say yes here, it'll save all the atoms you just deleted. So we'll just say no. I haven't actually ever pressed yes there. Uh, let's go back into PyCharm. And what I'm going to do is I'll make a new file. It'll call it SIO2. 111 slab.vasp. So the slab will have the vacuum. Uh, let's copy in the previous SIO2 file. And now we're going to go to the XYZ. We have 38 atoms. Let's go and copy these in here. Now, how many silicon do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 silicon. Okay, so now just kind of painstakingly remove this. You could do remove uh, replace with a blank space. Let's do oxygen. So 23, 46. So 46 minus 23 plus one is 24. Twenty-four oxygen. So there is some stoichiometry things that's kind of concerning. It should be SiO2. Let's go back to our cell quickly. Yeah, you see, we're gonna have two extra silicon in our system here. 
because we have we're keeping periodicity we, so our slab is breaking the stoichiometry okay and when our slab breaks the stoichiometry we're going to have uh, it looks like we're going to have a little bit more silicon so our slab has broken the stoichiometry here so it's no longer SiO2 uh, but we can just write this SiO2 111 slab so this is a comment that will load in Vesta. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete these oxygens now using uh, control replace. So I'm going to look for space O space. And I'm going to just replace it with a space. So basically this says the first 14 are silicon, the next 24 are oxygen. And we do have two extra silicon in our system because we've made the slab and the slab reduces the symmetry of the system. Okay. And let's go ahead and add 20 angstroms of vacuum just to be safe. Now let's go ahead and reload this in Vesta. So there you go. There's our 111 slab of silicon. Now, one thing you might want to do here is add uh, hydrogen atoms on top of the silicon surface. So this silicon is atom 7, this silicon is atom 12. How to distinguish them is you can tell they have this large Z coordinate here of about 12. So we can come back into PyCharm. Uh, we can add two hydrogen. We'll have to place them at the end. So with the first 14 are silicon, the next 24 are oxygen and two hydrogen. Let's go ahead and get the position of those silicons that have this 12 Z component. And let's paste them all the way down here. So we're looking for 12.9. This was the first one, and this is the second one, 12.922. And what we're going to do is the silicon, let's have it at 1.5 angstroms. So this plus 1.5, the silicon hydrogen bond. So this is approximate and you'd have to do a surface relaxation anyways for this system. So these are the hydrogens we're adding. So let's go back into Vesta now. Yep. So you can see now we have this surface with hydrogen atoms uh, included. Okay, so this will be the thumbnail, I think. And uh, yeah, I had a great time. Uh, comments in the comment section, please subscribe. and. Yeah, I got some exciting news coming up. I'll be coming out with a Udemy course, um, and it's going to feature some really cool systems, these 2D heterostructure systems. Uh, yeah, announcement coming out soon. Take care, everyone. See ya.